a sports beat presentation. Game Night Live kicks off now. Brought to you by Granite Credit Union. And hi there, everybody. Welcome to Game Night Live. Glad to have you aboard, Jeremiah. We are here. The home stretch of the high school football regular season, region titles, and playoff spots to be had or lost this week. Yeah, let's start in Region 4, where American Fork had a chance to end Bingham's streak of six consecutive region titles. A caveman win, they're outright champs. A Bingham win, they could share the title with three teams. This game lived up to the hype. AF strikes first, Boone Abbott to Chase Roberts, and the BYU commit turns this into a 58-yard touchdown. But the Bingham defense didn't give up much after that in the first half anyway. David Latu and a bunch of his friends had a big game on defense for Bingham. AF had a 10-7 lead in the third when Bingham quarterback Peyton Jones pulls off a great run, spinning through the AF defense. A 38-yard touchdown, Bingham led 21-10. When AF roars back in the fourth, Abbott to McKay Nelson with 10 and a half minutes left. Bingham's next possession. AF brings the pressure. It's going to force an interception. Stockton Bramwell with the pick. It sets up another Abbott touchdown pass. Devin Downing with a great catch. With eight and a half minutes left, the Cavemen led 24-21. Until 13 seconds left in regulation. What a great play call by Bingham. Jones to Brayson Hayward, the fullback. Bingham takes a 28-24 lead. AF still has some time, though. Somehow gets down in the red zone for a shot at the end zone. Bodie Schoonover with the catch. They call timeout with one second left and one shot for the end zone. Abbott to Roberts. Did he get it? No, the ball hits the ground. It's incomplete. What a play by the Bingham defense to preserve a big win for the Miners. So Lone Peak needed a win over Pleasant Grove to remain in a tie for first in Region 4 with Bingham and American Fork. And they had to rally in the fourth quarter to do it. It's our comeback of the week. All right, let's show you how this thing played out. Pleasant Grove, Jake Jensen, sideline with an injury. Caleb Campbell filling in. He's got the touchdown on the keeper. 10-0 PG, but Lone Peak would answer on the kickoff. Nate Ritchie takes it at the one and right up the chute. And there he goes. One man to beat, and that's the kicker, and he does. 99-yard touchdown. Minute and a half left. PG leading 16-14. Mason Wake scores from 11 yards out. Take the lead for Lone Peak. Pleasant Grove, they've got time looking to answer. Campbell picked off. And let's go the other way. Richie finishes with four interceptions, and Lone Peak comes back in the final few minutes to win it, 28-16. All right, in St. George, Desert Hills, and Dixie, both undefeated in Region 9. They'll meet Thursday for the region title. But in order for the Thunder to have it be a winner-take-all for the region title, they had to take care of Pineview. Panthers, on the other hand, needed a win to have a shot at a co-region title. Here's how it went down. Desert Hills will get things started. Logan Wilstead will find Tate Denos for the 23-yard score. Pineview's going to answer. Dallin Brown, the quarterback's going to keep it. And he's gone. 55 yards to tie the game. Second quarter, Thunder now leading 17 to 7. Brown's going to find Michael Moore. 45 yard touchdown at 17 14. Let's go to the fourth now. Desert Hills trailing by seven, under two minutes left. Wilstead to Denos again. He makes a couple of moves and he's going to get in to tie it at 30. So we're going to go to overtime. These things get crazy here. Desert Hills gets first. In overtime, Keena Taufa punches it across. Thunder up seven. Pineview's turn. They need a touchdown. Tosh right. He finds the end zone. Extra points good. They both have scored a touchdown in overtime number two. Third overtime, Willstead to Kyra Gold. The touchdown. Two-point conversion's good. They led by eight. Now Pineview needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie at the four-yard line right. Uh-oh. He fumbles. Jaron Pula recovers. And that is your ball game. Desert Hills wins in triple overtime to remain undefeated in Region 9. The showdown with Dixie a week from on Thursday. on Thursday night. Yeah. All right, Jordan and Corner Canyon both undefeated in Region 7. It seems like a theme, right? Yeah. Here with a week and a half left in the regular season. They will meet next week for the region title. But before that could happen, both needed to take care of business this week. Jordan on the road 
At Timfew, no easy task. T-Birds needing a win to have an outside shot at a share of the region title, down 6 0. Timfew, Nui Adolfo, Tafanga Pulu. Nine yards. T-Birds take a 7 6 lead at the half. Third quarter. Jordan's Jake Shaver has some room. Now a lot of room. There's nobody there. It's 83 yards. Jordan goes to Tim Few and leaves with an 18-7 win, setting up Wednesday showdown with Corner Canyon for the Region 7 title. Yeah, Jordan did its part to stay undefeated in Region Play. Corner Canyon trying to do the same, hosting Alpha Cody Hagen to Gaden Mares, 23 yards at 7-0 Corner Canyon. Still in the first, Hagen, this time to Talmadge Handley, and he'll get in for the 25-yarder. And in the second quarter, Alta knocking on the door, but here comes Austin Bell, picks it off at the one. Jeremiah, let's go the other way. Let's find the sideline, let's turn on the Jets, and let's end up with a 99-yard pick six. Corner wow. Canyon, they go to 4-0, Region 7. Showdown next week for the title. Pro Bowl and Wasatch, awesome moment right here for Wasatch senior lineman Damian Mellars. Uh, his dad, David, an active Green Beret, returning to be part of son's senior night, surprising him before kickoff. So How cool, cool is that? Pro out a 6 0 lead when Luke Haslam hits Ben Miles Mills, and he turns on the speed. Speed runs in that family. Yes, it does. 80 yard touchdown up the Pro Bowl lead to 12 0. Miles Mills had three touchdowns. Then Haslam again going to the air, this time to Drayson Havea. Gets a wall of blockers, breaks a couple tackles. He's gone for the 53 yard touchdown. Rebea with two TDs, Pro Bowl wins big, 40 to 22. All right, Tippinogas needs a win over Springville to stay alive for a playoff spot. First quarter, Gabe Sweeten to Max McWhorter. Stiff arm, he's gone, 67 yards, touchdown, Tippinogas. Let's go to the second quarter, Jaden Church. Trey Hillstead ties it at seven. Kind of wide open. A little bit. Third quarter, Church to Hillstead again. Springville's going to take a 14 to seven lead. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Timpanogos is Sosua, BC Payout. Smashing it in to send it to overtime. In overtime, Gabe Sweeten, quarterback keeper. He's got a touchdown, Timpanogos. Beat Springville to keep their playoff hopes alive. All right, rivalry hookup right here. Riverton hosting Harriman. The home playoff game up for grabs in this one. Riverton will score first. Dane McDonald to Stetson Thacker. Ten yard to out. Harriman scores on a play right here that tricked everybody, including our photographer. Uh, before the tackle's made, the ball's going the <laughs> other way. He's celebrating. <laughs> it's a 33-yard touchdown pass. Jackson James to Braxton Savage. Airman led 13-7 when Riverton takes back the lead. McDonald to Blake Chapman. And then the defense will step up. Airman trying for the double pass. Well, that one's complete. And this one's complete to the other jersey. Riverton to get the win. They'll host a playoff game for the first time in four years. East looking to close out the Region 3 title facing West Jordan. Second play from scrimmage, East Charlie Vincent. He's fast. He just got an offer from Princeton. How about that? I'd take that. 50-yard touchdown. Jags trailing 21-14. Cameron Blackard on the reverse. David Moctezuma ties the game. But in the second half, East runs away with it, literally. 2-2 span scores five touchdowns for the Leopards and a 56-28 win. All right, last year, Summit Academy and Juan Diego split two classic battles decided by a total of three points. Juan Diego won the game that mattered most, the 3A title. Yeah, Juan Diego won that game, and Summit Academy hasn't forgotten. Well, let's As see what they why do would here. They? they met again last night with a 3A Juan South Diego title on the line. The Summit Academy the got off to a quick start. Casey Briggs to Colin Dodge. Later in the first quarter, the two hook up again. It's 14-0 Bears after the first quarter. They're rolling. In the second, though, Juan Diego's defense comes up big. They force a fumble. Ooh. Ooh. Gabriel Caceres, touchdown. Love it when the big men score. Down 21-7, the Soaring Eagle get back into the game. Hunter Easterly cuts the Summit Academy lead to two. The two-point conversion failed, and the Summit Academy offense would respond. Drive down and score. They go up nine. Briggs and Dodge for a third time, and Summit Academy Goes on to win 28 to 19. The Iron Horse game, Ben Loman and Ogden. First quarter, Ogden's Riley Hansen. They'll finish with five touchdowns, seven nothing Tigers. 
Second quarter, Ogden's quarterback, Bo DeVries. Irving Gastelum drag his feet for the touchdown, 36-14. Second quarter, Ben Lomans, Nicholas Guzman. 36 to 20, and the Scots still behind at that point. A few plays later, Ogden's to Vries to Gastelum again. Ogden's got their sixth win of the season. They roll 56 to 26 and claim the Iron Horse. Battle for the Rock. Undefeated Olympus and Skyline. First quarter, Olympus with Tommy Polton. Bus free, 35-yard put down, 7-0 Titans. Then in the second quarter, Jack Holberg. Here we go, one missed tackle. Uh, add a pirouette to that thing. Let's go to the other side. You can hear the coaches in the uh, press box. Go! 41 yards is 22-0 at that point. Olympus with a shutout of the rivals. To claim the Region 6 title, they are undefeated. All right, Kearns can wrap up a perfect region season with a win over Granger. First quarter, Isaiah off a toss. What a year he's had. Duke's a guy, and he's got a 27-yard touchdown. Second quarter, Colby Smallwood catches the bubble screen. Looks like he's stopped. Oh, no, what strength. Breaks the tackle, and he's gone down the sideline. We might see that again later in the show. Maybe. 78 yards for the score. Kearns rolls 34-7. Logan hosting. Bear River, Grizzlies down seven when Johnny Parkinson finds Kevin Nye. Touchdown, 24 yards. Kate Thornley. All right, the catch of the night right here. Whoa! Finds the end zone. Logan scoring 28 straight points and able to get the win, 41 to 14. Skyview with the chance to go undefeated in region play, facing Ridgeline first quarter. Josh Allard, 35-yard touchdown for early Bobcat lead. Ridgeline answers in the second quarter. Breck Jackson finds Zeb Nyman. He's going to dive in for the score. It's a three-point game. And Skyview starts rolling again. Mason falls, and drops a bomb to Malik Horman. 49-yard touchdown. Skyview finishes a perfect 9-0 in the regular season. Highland hosting West, second quarter. Colton White. Uh, he's going to find a lot of room. And this is what Highland does all the time. 81-yard touchdown for the Rams. Uh, Highland also getting it done through the air last night. Bronson Oliveo going up top to Matthew Lloyd. Highland gets a shutout win over West, 48. Up. up next, our game of the week amongst friends. Bountiful in Viewmont as Region 5 is crowded at the top. You need a coin flip to determine playoff seating. We'll show you how it went down after this. All right, last night our Game Night Live crew was at Viewmont for the crosstown rivalry with Bountiful and much more than just bragging light rights on the line last night. Yeah, Viewmont winning the Vikings would at least share the region title. Bountiful needed a win and a Farmington loss to force a play-in game on Tuesday. Senior night at Viewmont. You got to watch it live on our KSL TV app. Welcome to Viewmont High School for the 55th meeting between crosstown rivals. On your mark, get set, eat! and goal at the two-yard line. Lines will keep it himself, and he'll walk into the end zone. Touch your line, a two-yard touchdown. Newmont on the board first. Second down and six. Summer Hayes busted outside. Robert Summer Hayes in for the six-yard touchdown. And now the Newmont Vikings on top of Battleville, 13 to nothing. Lines to throw, stays in the pocket, going deep. Got a receiver, got a step. This is going to be a Backfield again, first down and 10 at the 16 yard line. Summer Hayes, Robert Summer Hayes fighting his way into the end zone. And does he get in? Yes, he does. 16 yard touchdown. He carried about five Braves with him the last six or seven yards. First down and goal at the two yard line. Summer Hayes 
in. He's in for the touchdown. He has 218 yards rushing. The whole line did a heck of a job. They left some gaping holes, and it was awesome to run through. They did I a heck of a job. Right here. Good job, right here. Good job, right Good job, bro. I'm talking about. <laughs> and that will do it. The Beaumont Vikings, co-region five champs, as they get the win over Bountiful, 35 to nothing. And everything that we have done has been geared for this moment <laughs> to win the region title and to be playing our very best football going into the playoffs. Yes, sir. That is right where we're at right now, yes, okay? Oh, yeah. So great job, great work tonight. You did everything we asked you to do. Uh, we, put in, we put in a lot of work and it pays off. I mean, we've practiced like every day for the last three months and we've worked hard and we've earned it. Like we've worked hard and yeah, I'm just happy that we pulled it off again. Great work! Yeah! Reach yeah. Champions! Yeah. Yeah. Roy would join Beaumont for a share of the title with a win over Farmington. First quarter, Royals Kyrie's Rowan. A jet sweep's very popular in high school and college this year. He's got a touchdown. Roy led 14-0 after the first quarter. Second quarter, Roy driving again. Caden Harris. He's going to go in from three yards out. Roy built a 31-7 lead in the first half. They go on to win, but Farmington is in the playoffs That's for the first, first time. School. Box Elder would share the Region 5 title with Roy and Beaumont if they could take care of Woods Cross. First quarter, Woods Cross, Carson Nagel to Luke Hyde, 7 of the Wildcats. Next possession for Box Elder, Parker Buchanan. He'll get to keep it, and he goes in for the touchdown, ties it at 7. Fourth quarter, Buchanan to Connor Stevenson. Box Elder now takes a 35-28 lead. Final seconds of the fourth. Nagel to Jordan Johnson. Touchdown. So now Woods Cross got the extra point to tie it. Send it in overtime. It is up, and it is no good. Box Elder survives with the one-point win. So Box Elder, Roy, and Viewmont, they share the Region 5 title. They held a coin flip at 10.30 last night to determine seeding. Roy won the coin flip. They're the number one seed from Region 5. Box Elder, number two. Viewmont, the third seed. So it's all oh. clear as mud. Viewmont beat Roy. They got to beat. Oh, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, yeah. Hate Viewmont it when it comes down to, to a coin. Viewmont lost in triple overtime. That's true, been too. Outright region champs. But wow. Viewmont's won a share or won the title in Region 5 three straight years now. Hmm. All right, the projector's all loaded up, ready to roll. Ooh. Here we are. Guess what's coming next? It's the highlight reel, and it's next. <laughs> All right, here we go. We've loaded up the projector. It's all ready to roll. All right, the best of week nine packed into 90 seconds. It's the latest highlight reel. Brought to you by Granite Credit Union. All right. Kearns Colby Smallwood. I told you you'd see it later. Did you believe me? I did. That's just strength. I love it. Yeah. 
Nothing pretty, nothing fancy, just totally strong. I love it. All right, that's your choice number one for our play of the week. Number two comes from Box Elder Woods Cross. The game-winning TD from Box Elder. Connor Stevenson tracks it down over his head, makes the catch on the outside, staying in bounds, and that turned out to be the game-winning touchdown. All right, Nate Ritchie, what a game he had for Lone Peak. Four interceptions. One he took to the house, and he also took this kickoff to the house. It's a 99-yard kickoff return. Lone Peak beat PG. Your final choice, choice for the top play of the week, Parker Swenson, going to Trey Lofton. The one-handed grab for the touchdown. Jeremiah, where can they go to vote for the best? Go on Twitter, the KSL Sports page. You'll see the options in the poll there. We'll, uh, give the, we'll crown the winner on Sports Beat Sunday. Okay, next uh, Wednesday, our Game Night Live crew will be at Spanish Fork for the Region 10 championship matchup with Orem. Last night, Spanish Fork's defense getting it done against you. The ball comes loose. Ben Boyack, he takes it to the house. It's 21 nothing Dons. And how about this run by Marco Williams? Breaking tackles right and left. Still on his feet. That's One more, and then outruns everybody. Gets a block right there, and he's in for the touchdown. All right, uh, here's the play of the night from this game. You just saw it. The one-handed catch. He makes the grab. Trey Lofton. That's one of your uh, choices for our top plays of the week. Go to our Twitter page, KS, uh, at KSL Sports, and you can vote. And, We'll have the winners tomorrow. High school kids making one-handed grabs. I you know, never saw awesome. that when I was in high school. Uh, Wednesday night, our Game Night Live crew, Spanish Fork and Orem, Region 10 title. That's going to be fun. See ya.